Today I have a video for you that shows the difference between moral use of force and the legal definition of justified deadly force. If you want to keep your shooting skills primed, you have to regularly dry fire. Manus X is the best dry fire tool available to help you to stay sharp all the time. I use it every week. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. This particular one is going to show us a bail bond agent who has a confrontation with a client that goes terribly wrong. Make sure to go read the news stories that I have linked in the description. There are a bunch of them in this one and they are very important. This is the office of a bail agent in Oklahoma and she is uh, worried that this guy who is in the t-shirt and the ball cap, the bigger guy, is going to run off on his bail and he owes her about $3,500 for his bail and so she is going to try to take him into custody. And if you go watch the original on this one, this conversation they're having right now is very jovial and, and very kind. He's talking about this kid's car out in the parking lot like they know each other, like these guys are just fine. But everything is going to go south in a hurry here. And so I want to listen in and hear what actually gets said and hear how everything goes down. But recognize there's a huge context here. And while the criminal case has been fully adjudicated, the civil case has not been fully adjudicated yet and that's going to be the focus of our discussion and lessons but let's listen in first and then come back what turn around what do you mean turn around what's going on here i'm going to sit and talk to you cups we're going to have a chat well i'm not getting no cups yeah, actually you are. For what? I've got Edie on the way over. You can turn around. Oh, you can have right. back. For what? Turn around. Man. Open the door. No, hey, turn around. Don't put your hands on me. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Don't. Put your hands turn on me. Turn around and put your hands behind your back. Why? What are you doing this to me for? Why are you doing this? Hands behind your back. What are you doing this to me for, man? Why? Mom, you just shot it. I did. Friends, I gotta admit, the first few times I watched this, I was just awestruck, dumbstruck really, with how it went. And, and I just have a question for you. Do you think that this bail bond agent is going to lose her shirt in the civil case? Hit that poll and let me know what you think. Personally, I think she's gonna get absolutely crucified in the civil trial. And that's where I wanna think about our lessons. Number one, I wanna talk about why we say you only use your firearm as a tool of last resort. Even if you come out in legally in criminal court like this, you still got the civil fight ahead of you. Secondly, I want to talk about the definition of a deadly threat. And third, I want to talk about follow-up actions and why they are so important in our defense. Let's start here by thinking about prior planning that keeps us out of deadly force encounters. Look at how big this guy is. If she had any inkling that he was going to resist her taking him into custody, which makes a lot of sense to me, then having her and this little skinny kid who is her son being the people who are going to take him into custody probably wasn't the best idea. Having some kind of intermediate force option, having somebody else there who had the size to take this guy into custody if he decided to you know, fight back a little bit or resist would have been incredibly wise and perhaps keeping this entire thing from happening. Now, as she gets up to finally kind of take this guy into custody, he knows everything is going to go wrong here. He doesn't want to get taken into custody, and we understand that. However, this is how things go. Now, if you go read about bail bondsmen, bail bondsmen are not police officers, but they do have arrest authority because of their job, because of what they do for a living. Makes a lot of sense. Now, that said, they don't have any additional authority in terms of using deadly force. They're not uh, able to go plus one and use deadly force as a tool for compliance. They are in the same boat that the rest of us are, which is they can only use that to protect their own life.
wife. Now, when this guy decides that he's going to leave, now we're going to start talking about what the wise thing to do is. At some point, I get it. This is a financial hit on her, but she doesn't have the ability to stop this guy. Now, notice that he's heading out the window. You can see that window come up there, and she made a significant argument in court that he was racing her for the gun, but we don't see her struggling to get to the gun. And let's be real, if she had actually been fighting this larger, bigger, stronger guy for the gun, he would have gotten to it without any question at all. Instead, he's trying to get out the window, but it's a third floor window. Now, here's where we start to talk about the difference in standards, because in a criminal court, they charged her with first degree murder. And instead, the jury says, and you can read the links in the description, the jury has said explicitly, if they had charged with manslaughter or with the reckless use of a gun, they would have convicted her. Also now, as she gets the gun out and she uh, uses it, notice she pushes the gun all the way out. He hasn't contacted her. There hasn't been any physical contact. But in the charging, the district attorney charged her only with murder one, and he had to prove malice in the court of law. Now again, go read the news stories in the description and you will see she would have taken a plea bargain to do 10 years in prison, but the prosecutor would not give it because the prosecutor felt like he could get murder one out of this. But the jury didn't believe malice. The jury didn't believe that she intended to kill him because her attorney did a pretty good job of convincing them that they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she intended to kill him because of how she shot him. Now, I think that was pretty creative lawyering. And now I have to ask a couple of questions about that. Number one, will that hold in civil trial? No, it won't hold in civil trial. Then remember, there's a difference in the objective standard. In criminal case, you have to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt that what she did was not reasonable, and that's a very high standard. But in civil court, it's upon a preponderance of the evidence. And while beyond a reasonable doubt might be somewhere above 90% surety, a preponderance of the evidence means more likely than not, 50% plus one of the, the fact that it was not okay versus okay. And I really think that when a civil jury looks at this with that standard of evidence, they are gonna find her not justified. Regardless of that, think about what this has cost her. This use of force, could she have avoided it to begin with? Did she have to pull the trigger? So could she pull the trigger? Well, she, she made it all the way through the trial and was acquitted, even though that might've cost her 50, 100, $150,000 and cost her her career. She said she's not gonna be a bail bondsman anymore. But what we see there is she used this firearm and now she has to deal with the civil ramifications of that, the career change and the social ramifications of it and all that. So this is why, friends, I say, even in an instance where you might beat charges, it's going to cost you your financial future, cost you hugely in social, emotional, spiritual fitness, those kind of things, and can cost you in civil court to where the rest of your life is ruined, which is why we say you only use the firearm in the case where there's no other option to protect your life because that's when it's valuable to use. Now, she puts the firearm down, finally, and gets on the phone with 911. Yes, if ever you use deadly force, you must get on the phone with 911. But I want to be very careful how you articulate it. You notice that she says, yeah, I shot a man. He was on the third floor, and it looks like he fell out the window or whatever. Instead, <clears throat> you definitely want to watch. We've put a, uh, I'll put a link here in the cards to make sure that you can uh, get some time to think about what to say to 911. This is an incredibly important call. You want to say a minimal amount of stuff. You want to say the right things to 911 and not run off at the mouth. That said, it's going to be very difficult in that moment. And notice her son, how incredibly emotional he is because of what's just happened. And that makes a lot of sense. So friends, I just want to say on this one, I don't think this was justified. Now, I think that, can I prove that beyond a reasonable doubt? Her attorney did a very good job. The prosecutor overcharged and wouldn't take the plea bargain. She could have easily have done 10 years for this. And he could easily, the prosecutor could easily have gotten a conviction for a lesser charge of manslaughter, for a, rest, uh, a lesser charge of the reckless discharge of a gun. And so friends, you don't want to put yourself in this kind of a, a condition. You want instead to use your firearm only as a tool of last resort so that you don't lose your financial future, you don't lose your career, you don't lose a civil case, which I think she's going to have a really hard time in civil court defending herself, and put yourself in this kind of condition. Instead, only use your firearm as a tool of last resort. Only use it to defend your life and the lives of others. And if you do that, you don't face these kind of challenges as you seek to cover your ASP.